Mm. It's time to get comfortable up in here, y'all. What's good, everybody? How y'all doing out there? Hey, welcome back to a another edition of Lockout Men Makes the Call. Thank you very much for tuning in. Last week's call was to Maverick Transportation. Uh, pretty good call. I mean, uh, the recruiter, Bailey, gave some pretty good information out there. Um, I mean, you know, the phone call kind of went downhill towards the end of the video, but in any case, he still gave uh, a lot of good information uh, about Maverick Transportation and their flatbed glass and their temp division. Um, I did, though. I got a little bit of backlash from that video. Let me put it to you this way. Nobody's paying me for these videos, not for the past videos that I made and not for the future videos that I will be making. I am not making no money off of it. This is sorely for information for new drivers or existing drivers or anybody that is interested in coming into the trucking field. Um, talking to recruiters is kind of intimidating to some people and you know and a, and a lot of recruiters are are like salesmen for the trucking companies now you being a new guy coming in you you really not going to know none of the questions to ask these guys so basically what you what you're going to end up doing is taking their kool-aid and drinking it I hope that's a good analogy, I'm thinking. It's hard to find good drivers out here. And you got to be that recruiter to sell your product to that potential driver. Basically, that's what, that's what some of these drivers are. They're, 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 they're shopping. They're window shopping. You know what I'm saying? They're window shopping. What they're doing is they're comparing prices, you know. There's two things you don't want to do uh, with a driver. Number one, you don't want to mess with his money, all right? And number two, you don't want to mess with his home time. See, that's basically what a driver is looking for. He's looking for a place where he can make good money and looking for a place where he can get home, you know, when need be, when he needs to get home. And basically, that's what I'm trying to bring uh, to the fold with my new video series, you know. And so, with that said, I do want to say that Bailey from Maverick really was, uh, really was a lot of good information from him. So, there wasn't nothing wrong, uh, per se, with him as... A recruiter for Maverick all right he was a good you know I asked him the questions he answered it it just pretty much went downhill when you know he was asking me for my email address and I tried to explain to him at the end of the video that I already had information from the last time they from the last time I talked to Maverick see I talked to Maverick before I did that video, maybe about six, six months to a year. And I was interested at that time in their temp division. But unfortunately, their temp division wasn't available in my hiring area. So that's why they still had information uh, on the phone call that I had with them previously. So that's was the issue with the email all right so when he was asking me for my email and i was trying to tell him that they already you not him personally i think i spoke with a female at that time i'm not sure but when i gave him you know they already had my email and i tried to explain to him well you already had my email about maverick all right uh i do want to say this about maverick maverick does have one, if not 
the best securement training program uh, for flatbed out there. I just wanted I just wanted to throw that out there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so if you decide to come into flatbed, Maverick is probably one of the best training facilities that you can go to to uh, learn about flatbed security. So that's what I wanted to say about Maverick. Uh, after that, we about to get into this video right here. Lockout Men makes the call. Let's see who I'm about to call next. Go, go, go! Let's do this. What's good, everybody? How y'all doing out there, man? What's up? What's up? All right, so with this episode of Lockout Men Mates the Call, we're going to call... Who are we going to call today? We're going to call MB Global Logistics. This is a trucking company uh, that's based out of Illinois. You'll see a little bit of information about MB Logistics. So basically, this company right here is a owner operator lease operator company. You can get paid. Team drivers get paid 3600 I mean 3600 to 4800 weekly split to sign on bonus for the teams. I don't believe there's a sign on bonus for solos. Basically, this is not uh, giving me too much information as a solo, but a lot of information is teams. Basically run all 48 states, about 5,500 miles to 6,500 miles per week. 24-7 dispatch. The average weekly take-home pay for the team drivers is 4,400 split. So they're looking at about 2,200 apiece. So, everybody, let's get on board. Let's give m and a call and let's see what m and Logistics is all about. What's up, everybody? How's it going out there? All right, all right. Well, welcome back to another hometown episode of Lockout Men Makes the Call. And yes, I will make the call for you guys to get the information that you want to find out from these trucking recruiters out here. MB, this is Chris, how can I help you? MB Global. M as in Mary B Global. Correct. Okay, okay, yeah. I, and I've I seen one of you guys' trucks and I wanted to call to get uh, some more information about the company. So it is M as in Mary, B as in boy, Global. Logistics, right? Correct. Okay. Uh -huh. oh, yes. Okay. Well, I I got some questions I like to ask. So, is it all right that I? Yeah, ask? of course. All right. all right, Crystal. It's nice to meet you today. Orientation. <laughs> is it, <laughs> orientation. Is it paid for? And mm -hmm. how much is it paid? And how much is the pay? Orientation is not paid for within our company. Um, the way orientation works is it's typically two and a half days. We always tell drivers to expect to be here you know, for two and a half minimal. Um, <clears throat> now, drivers are expected to expense their way to get here for orientation, and then we will have the hotel and everything set up. We do provide lunch, you know, while you're here in the office, and then um, and then we reimburse drivers up to $200 for their travel expenses here um, once orientation is completed and then their first paycheck. So let me see, let me make sure I understand this. Uh, you, you guys don't make the way down for us to get to you guys, but you guys will reimburse us for the travel mm -hmm. to you? Yeah, and your first paycheck. So it's pretty much uh, two days, two days free, pretty much. Um, I guess if you want to look at it that way, yeah. <laughs> okay. If I don't make it through orientation, then I will, 
I, it's my responsibility to make my way back home? Correct. Okay. I mean, okay, so the screening that we go through, to be honest with you, the odds of actually you not, you know, making it through in orientation are very slim. As long as you're completely honest with us, you know, we're, there shouldn't be a reason, okay? Now, we do require that all drivers are familiarized with logbooks, okay? Now, for example, we've had drivers who, um, yeah, 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 I know logbooks, I'm good, I know logbooks, I know logbooks you know, paper logs, and then they get here and all of a sudden, you know, when they're presented with the logbook test, because we do, you know, we do, we do test all drivers, uh, make sure that they do know paper logs. Once they're presented with the test, you know, the story changes and it's, oh, you know, I don't know logs and stuff like that. Okay. Now, okay. that could be a reason for you not to complete orientation, okay? Like I said, as long as you're honest and completely open with us, there should be no reason why you can't complete orientation. Do you guys offer uh, offer positions for uh, drivers that's coming out of that's coming out of out of school? Now, as far as experience goes, we do require that all drivers have a minimal solo drivers have a minimal of two years experience. Okay, and as far as teams, we require a year and a half experience. What's the uh, what's the CPM? I'm sorry, the what? CP, cent per mile. <laughs> oh, okay, um, that's probably why I don't know it. See, I don't come from trucking industry. This is my first one. So I'm still learning the trucking terms. Um, but the way that it works, we do not pay a cent per mile. Uh, we pay a percentage. So you get a rate, a percentage rate per load. Drivers receive 82% of the load, and the company gets 18%. What's the average miles I can get per week? Uh, we ask drivers to drive an average of 3,500 to 4,000 miles a week, and then two to three weeks on the road at a time. All right, is that uh, is 3,500 to 4,000 miles is for solo, or is that for team? That's a solo. Oh, that's for solo? You guys offer layover and detention pay and stop pay? Now, as far as layover and detention, um, that is something we don't, you know, guarantee a specific amount. That is something, you know, between your dispatcher, your dispatcher will fight for you in regards to the broker and everything like that. For the simple fact, um, now this is, you know, more of a reassurance thing. Our dispatchers, they collect 100% commission, okay? So they're not paid a salary. They're not anything, you know, they come to work to make money, okay? And the only way that they make money is if you're making money. So for you to be detained or anything like that, it's not going to benefit them. So of course they're going to try harder, you know, not to get, you know, not to have any issues. But issues do arise, you know. So keep, you know, the dispatchers they will fight for you because at the end of the day, you know, if you're not driving, you're not making money. They're not making anything. What about stop pay? Uh, I'll elaborate on stop pay. Uh, well, do we get paid for each stop? So let's say if we have a load that's that's require multiple stops, do we get do we get paid for that? No. All right, you guys. Uh, no, oh. it's it's strictly percentage per uh, load. You guys offer holiday vacation. No, all drivers are ten ninety nine, so we do not offer any of that. Okay. So, okay. So this is ten ninety nine. So you guys don't offer medical, dental, vision, or life insurance. No. What's the sign on bonus, and how much is it? Okay. So there's only sign on bonus for teams. The sign on bonus for teams is five thousand dollars. It's twenty five hundred a piece, and it's paid out over um, a five hundred dollar increment. So it's five hundred dollars a month um, after every thirty days, and as long as you know the driver is. Uh, accident ticket and violation free they receive their bonus I want to go back on to uh, the percentage so you says you, you said that the driver get 80 82 percent of the of the load can you elaborate on mm -hmm. on how much is how much is that per week what, what's the average pay per week so our drivers are averaging 17 to 2200 a week after all expenses you know, and that's, as I stated, 3,500 to 4,000 miles a week, and then two to three weeks on the road at a time. Now, do keep in mind, right now the market is, you know, it's, it's 
a very well-paying market at the moment. So divers are bringing home even more. Okay. But it's all depending, you know, on the market and stuff like that. What lanes do you guys offer? We do not have dedicated lanes. Okay, so <clears> this is so this is just all uh, all forty eight over the road. Correct. Is this um is this company drive van only, or do you guys have other divisions there? We are drive van. What is the uh, pet and rider policy? We have an open pet and open rider policy. All that we ask is, you know, um, drivers are or not drivers, riders are over the age of thirteen. Um, you do have to have an extra insurance as far as that goes, and I believe it's about $82 a year. What type of equipment do you guys have? Uh, is it 10 speeds, automatics? Um, it's both. We actually, we have automatic and manual. Oh. Okay, so all of our drivers are required to drive both automatic as well as um, automatic and manual. Okay. And we do test all drivers as well. Volvo and Freightliner. Oh, Volvos and Freightliners? Okay. For driver comfort, what amenities do you guys offer inside the truck? Well, the trucks are rental trucks, okay? So, um, I mean, the trucks are basic standard. Now, we do ask that, um, I mean, drivers can add extra things that they want, but we do ask um, no alterations on ask. We were, drivers cannot make alterations to, um, to the interior. So no removing anything that's already there, but you you know you're more than welcome to add. Okay. Like if you want to put in a converter and stuff like that, but as I stated, the trucks are rentals. What's your what's your policy on felons? Uh, we ask no felonies or DUI in the past five years. Truck parking? Can we can we take the trucks home? Now you can take the truck home. You're more than welcome to. Um, like let's say if you wanted to go home for a 34 hour reset. Now one thing that we do suggest to drivers is that if you're going to be home for if you want to go home for more than four days, you know typically like three or four days, um, you're going to want to bring the truck back here. Our only um, our only lot is located here in Addison, Illinois, which is near Chicago. Um, so if you are going to go home, like I said, for more than four days, we always advise drivers to just bring the truck back here, go home, take a week home, and then come back when you're ready. Because as long as you have the truck in your possession, you are responsible for the rent of the truck. Okay. And one of the joys, you know, of a lot of drivers, you know, a lot of drivers have told me is that we do offer the, if you want to take a week home, leave the truck here, and you're not responsible for the rental. You know, for example, truck going home, if you plan it in advance, you know, getting a round trip ticket, depending on where you're located, um, I mean, it could average anywhere from, even if you're spending $300, that's still cheaper than $725 a week for the truck rental. Now you mentioned now now you're mentioning the rental of the trucks. Are the drivers responsible mm -hmm. for that rental? Yes, out of the eighty-two percent of the drivers, uh, the eighty-two percent of the drivers receive, they are responsible for fuel, tolls, seven twenty-five a week in truck rental, plus ten cents a mile for a Penske maintenance fee. Now the Penske maintenance fee, what it covers, is twenty-four-seven roadside service. So if for whatever reason truck breaks down, they come out, they repair it. If they're unable to, then they swap you out so you can continue on driving. This is an owner, no, no, no. This is not a company driver um, position. This is an owner operator position. Okay. okay. So, okay. you mean you're driving as an owner operator, but you're renting the truck. So, you're not required to lease it, you know, to get out a loan. With leasing the truck, I mean, that truck is yours. You're locked into the truck for the next, you know, however many years. Okay. With our program, you're not locked into any truck. So let's say, you know, you get into a truck and you've got issues with it, you know, you let our equipment department know and they'll work on swapping you out with, a, you know, a different one so that you're not sitting there with an issue truck. For, you know, for instance, if you had the lease, you'd be stuck with your truck. That's your truck. End of story. You guys don't offer a refresher course for a driver that's already have experience five, but haven't been driving for the last five. Unfortunately, no, we do not. What's the driver turnover? there at uh, M and B. Um, as far as like driver our turnover rate, to be honest with you, it's a little bit more on the difficult side to calculate. Only for the simple fact that we've got a lot of drivers who come and go. Oh. Our drivers. And by come and go is I mean they come, they work for a few months straight and then they go and they take a month vacation. We have a lot of drivers that take a month vacation. 
Now, when a driver is gone for more than 30 days, we are required to deactivate them from our system, to take them off the insurance, and then when they come back, we have to go through the reactivation process, so another drug test. So technically, it's considered a new employment period. That's part of a turnover rate, so to say. Okay. All right. So, um, I mean, for instance, like, our actual drivers leaving the company completely, not very high. Okay. But, you know, if you're looking at a technical turnover, it's high. But again, it's because drivers leave and come back. What's the trust, go mm -hmm. uh, what are the trust governing that? 70. How many drivers are assigned to a fleet manager? Maximum eight. Pre-plans. Do you guys stack pre-plans? As far as the dispatchers pre-planning the driver's trip, correct? Is yes. That what yes. Referring to? Okay. Um, you know what? It's different for each driver. All right. Do you guys have an open door policy? We're very, very big. Yeah, we're very big on um, our, I guess you wouldn't say any kind of conflicts that drivers may have. So, like, yes, we have a very big open door policy. Our the owners of the company are very much involved, and by very much involved, I mean they are here every single day, you know, Monday through Sunday, and they work, you know, practically 24-7 alongside with the drivers, as well as the internal employees. We are not, uh, you know, we're not going to sit over here and say, well, you know, you got to speak with this person, you got to do this. No, we all work really big on customer service. Do you guys offer reimbursements for wait tickets? I'm not 100% sure on that. So far, you are making me feel very confident about all my answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that one, I'm not 100% sure on. Uh, I can find that answer out for you, though. Is there for is there is there forced dispatch to New York or California? Okay, why well, is that considered forced dispatch? Well, we go by it's called a market-based dispatch. Okay, so the way that it works is. Um, like I said, you know, the market's changing so frequently, so we do require that all drivers um, have the availability to run all 48 states. Okay. okay. And the reason for that, again, you know, you have to give your trust to your dispatcher because they, they're not making money unless you're making money. Okay. New but York New is an York optional City. state with us. Or an optional city. New York yeah. City is optional with us. Yeah. The drivers do not want to go to New York City. We do not require that. Okay. Same thing with California. So, some drivers don't. California is considered one of our 48 states. Okay. okay. So, California is a required state. Where's the, uh, where's the uh, terminal located again? Addison, Illinois. Addison. And that's the only terminal that's, that's, that you guys have? This is 100% live lows, no no dropping hooks. Correct. Do you guys don't offer raises or anything like that? We do not, no. I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't come across that, especially with the drivers that we have now. I've never came up. I haven't come across an issue. I haven't heard about an issue in regards to that. Our drivers are making very good money. They were very happy with where they're at. You can offer anything that I haven't touched on? No, I think we've, this has been a very productive conversation. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, cool. Oh, uh, you know what, I got it, I got you. I got one thing. Okay. <laughs> um, we require that all of our drivers have a $2,000 escrow account, okay? Okay. Um, now, the escrow, the way that it works is we remove $400 a week for the first five weeks. Okay, um, and the reason for the escrow is just to guarantee that, you know, if you decide to leave the company, that you are going to bring the truck and trailer back without any damage or anything wrong. Okay. 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 So it's more of a it's more of a security deposit. A deposit. Yeah. Okay. Crystal, well, thank you very much, Crystal. How would I be able to get in contact? Uh, we're putting in an application with MMB MMB Logistics. Am I pronouncing that right? It is just M B Logistics, Global Logistics. M B Global Logistics. It's just M as in Mary, B as in Boy, Global Logistics. Dot com. Well, thank you, Crystal, for your time and for the information. I really do appreciate it, and uh, thanks for the thank. Thank you for your time. Yeah, of course, no problem at all. You have a wonderful evening. Hey, you too. Now. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, there you have it, everybody.
M and B Global Logistics uh, Trucking. Uh, they are a lease purchase. Well, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They are a are a lease. Uh, operating trucking company but what makes this company different is instead of lease purchase you're renting the trucks so I'm not sure if if too many drivers are interested in renting renting the truck I'm me personally I'm more for on the side of purchasing you know because if if I'm gonna rent the truck, if I'm gonna spend all that money uh, renting the truck, then I might as well just go ahead and buy it. You know what I'm saying? But I guess this particular trucking company is for, for truckers that's, uh, that would do limited driving. You know what I'm saying? Um, that will probably drive for like a month and then take off a month and then or less than a month because she says if you take off that full month you got to start it all over again so i guess you got to come in on the 29th day to get back in to get back into the truck that is it thank you guys for joining me once again for lockout man makes the call if you guys is uh interested in the in, uh, if you guys have questions or anything like that, leave it in the comments below. And also, if you guys want me to call a certain trucking company, leave that in the comments below as well. I'm getting a list together from the subscribers that's, um, that's leaving me the trucking companies that they want me to call. And probably next week I will probably make one of them phone calls to a subscriber a subscriber request trucking company alright so you guys like what I'm doing hit that like button make sure you subscribe you guys have a blessed day and I will check you guys out next week lockout men makes the call take it easy everybody I did get an email from Maverick though. I, I got an email from Maverick and I like to share it with you guys. I got a I got an email from a young lady named Callie Hellscott. I hope I pronounced your name right. And if I and if I didn't, I am terribly sorry. But the uh email is from her. She is uh, Maverick social media specialist I didn't realize that these companies have social media uh, specialists now hmm. but anyway uh, the email goes is this uh, good morning LaShawn uh, we reached out to you but we were unable to get a hold of you via phone number that we had on file See, they had my old phone number as well. They still got my current email, both of them, as a matter of fact, my personal and my uh, and my social media email. They got both of those. Um, it goes on to say that we wanted to thank we wanted to thank you for taking the time to call us last week, but want to also apologize for the comp for how the conversation ended with our recruiter, Beatty. I and I and our Maverick team can assure you that here at Maverick we are determined to treat every driver, employee, customer and vendor with the utmost respect and want to give you our sincerest apologies. If you have any questions and would like to speak with me directly, please feel free to give me a call at the number below or free or feel free to email me. Again, we are very sorry for the way the conversation ended and we'll be happy to provide you with any information you you would like on 
our driving positions or at Mav or Maverick as a whole. Thank you for your time. Cali Cali Health Scott. Again, Cali, if I pronounced your name wrong, I am very sorry. And yes, um, yes, your apologies are accepted. And I, you know, like I said before, I feel bad how the conversation ended as well between me and Bailey last week. But I would like to say that Bailey did provide good information about Maverick and the positions that you guys have available there at Maverick. So again, uh, if you guys are interested in Maverick, give them a call, you know, and uh, talk to Bailey and see what kind of positions they can uh, provide for you.